I don't have words. I am so happy. So I participated in this competition, the Dynamic World Record for Diving Under Ice. Dynamic, it means how far you go, and I went for 140 meters. The day before of my record, one Japanese woman break my record from 2017. So it was a really <laughs> shock for me. And it was a really nice feeling to get it back. I focus on myself, slow down my heartbeat. It's difficult because it, first of all, held in the ice water, it's around two degrees. And also you are blocked from the ice. You cannot get out whenever you want. You have to reach the next hole that it's open. So I was swimming with one fin, like a dolphin or like a mermaid. I held my breath one minute and 40 seconds. When I come out, I did the OK sign. Flight card! <laughs> I achieved my goal. I was so happy and emotional. Is anybody else totally claustrophobic watching that? Did you did you catch that? She held her breath for a hundred uh, for one minute and forty seconds. She brought her heart rate down to fifty. That distance is uh, about the length of one and a half football fields. The deadline to contribute to an RRSP for this year is February 29th. But if last year was any indicator, more and more Canadians are struggling to put money away. Earlier this month, the Bank of Montreal released its annual retirement survey. It found the amount of money held in RRSPs dropped by 28% in 2023. Margaret Leong is a senior investment counselor and portfolio manager at BMO. She joins us now to explain what this means. Margaret, thanks for joining us. First of all, why do you think you're seeing that drop? Well, uh, thanks for having me tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I think the retirement survey results were really interesting, even though I was not directly involved in the survey. And we don't know exactly why there's a big drop um, in those numbers. But despite the decline, uh, one thing to know is that the total account holding are actually in line with the historical averages. And uh, it's just with a very notable increase of the retirement saving during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic time. And I think this result does not necessarily mean that people are actually withdrawing money from the RSP because typically that means it has a fairly negative uh, tax consequences. So um, based on my observation, I think there could potentially be two, two factors. One is the pandemic effect, of course. During the pandemic, we have nowhere to go, no restaurant, no entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're sort of uh, cooped up at home and we have a lot of money to save. So after the pandemic, what we're seeing is the economy reopen in 2022. And we experienced a couple of really important um, phenomena. One is uh, supply chain shock. We have war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We had labor shortage and significant increase in consumer spending. So all that actually drove the inflation up to nearly 9% at one point. So we're seeing cost of living going up while our income level stayed uh, level. Um, a lot of us have to dip into savings or even, you know, um, cut down on our saving mm -hmm. into our speed. So I think this is one of the reasons that contribute to this drop of number. And the second one um, is um, a market effect. Um, a lot of us could remember that back in 2021, 22, the market actually has a very good uptick. But um, in the first quarter of 2022, when the central bank start hiking rate from near zero to up to 5%, what we're seeing is the debt and equity market had a severe drop in value. So the survey was actually conducted in November 2023. So this number may have a lagging effect. Mm -hmm. So the good news is that if we're resurveying these number uh, today, it could look a lot better. Yeah. Uh, saving money can feel overwhelming for many people. We know cost of living and inflation has bitten to a lot of people's incomes, especially people struggling to afford basic needs. What's your advice for them on a, on a, real, on a real micro level? So I think what's really important, and of course, I'm observing the, this from a lot of my clients. I've been in the industry for 28 years. It is really important to start out a plan because different people have different needs. Um, we have a lot of uh, tax shelter plan um, from the government. RSP is actually one of them, but there are other ones such as TFSA, you know, uh, first home savings plan and RESP and whatnot. Not everybody necessarily need to buy RSP and it really boils down to the planning. So um, the smarter way to do this is probably seek professional um, advice to check your tax bracket to see if these RSP contribution even will result in any tax advantage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for, for example, people who are starting out with low income tax bracket, 
you know, the contribution to RRSP may not produce a very significant tax benefit. Instead, maybe look into contribute into TFSA, which is another tax shelter vehicle that allows you to redeem and use it as an emergency fund. There's no penalty when you redeem um, the, the fund, so there's no tax consequences. Whereas Margaret, RRSP I appreciate, I apologize for interrupting. We're right out of time. Margaret Leong, Senior Investment Counselor and Portfolio Manager at BMO. Thank you for your time and your expertise. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Good night. Lydia Zimmer lives to dance, but at the moment, she's got more than the music on her mind. The consequences of not having the funding would be that someone local like myself who doesn't have the biggest resume in the world um, wouldn't, get, wouldn't get programmed. The Canadian Arts Presentation Fund provides financial assistance to organizations that present and support arts programs. Without it, Zimmer says this show, which she choreographed and performed in, would never have happened. I hired dancers, um, I hired lighting designers, costume designers, rehearsal directors, the whole, the whole jumble. The fund got an $8 million top-up in 2019. That extra cash will expire at the end of March. Some say it could mean higher ticket prices and less Canadian content. Those truly Canadian stories that give us a sense of what is happening in various parts of the country, in various cultures. He says 600 organizations stand to lose money, particularly in rural Canada. The costs of touring a show uh, are significant no matter where you where you're located uh, but of course the longer the trip uh, the more expensive it is this summer concert series in Kensington PEI benefits from the fund the Department of Heritage says the additional money was always meant to be limited and was extended through the pandemic but under the spires executive director says it makes no sense to return to pre-pandemic funding it's just a different world now there's different concerns there's different expenses there's a lot of different uh, costs that have risen dramatically <laughs> Zimmer says if the funding is not restored, organizations will be making some difficult decisions about who gets to perform. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Halifax. Eliane Bouchard never thought she'd have to move again. But in just over a month, the 91-year-old will be packing up her studio apartment for another senior's home. I'm broken. I'm very broken. And I need help, H-E-L-P. The cost of her current place is going up by almost $1,000 per month. 
Bouchard is one of three tenants of a retirement residence in Ottawa who says their monthly fees are skyrocketing. My pension is $2,900, and I knew uh, about three, four years, four years to stay here, I won't have any more saving. Their landlord, Alavita Lifestyles, is removing what it calls a marketing discount, promised to some tenants when they first moved in, but not included on the lease a timeline for how long it would last or what the discount covers. While most rent increases in Ontario are regulated, that rule doesn't apply to fees like those for meals and other services at seniors' residences. I just felt like my world had dropped out. 80-year-old Catherine Elliott says she also has no choice to move. Her rent and her service package increasing by over $1,000 a month. I could not possibly stay here with that kind of a, a price. I live on a pension, right? Um, I don't have that kind of money to throw around. 82-year-old Penny Eccles says she has no plans to pay the extra costs and is seeking legal advice. Experts say that fight might be a tough one. It's very important that the tenant read any agreement put before them very carefully and make sure that they understand um, the rent that's being charged and what is included in that rent. Officials with Alavita Lifestyle say those discounts were never supposed to be permanent, adding with those rental restrictions, it needs other ways of raising revenue to keep up with inflation. Nicole Williams, CBC News, Ottawa. There is healing in these Russian songs, a way for Betty Kabatov to acknowledge what was taken from her. They wouldn't let us speak Russian. I got strapped every time I did. She was just eight years old when a police officer took her from her bed, forced to spend four and a half years here at a former tuberculosis sanitarium with 200 other Dukabor children, members of a group known as the Sons of Freedom. Russian Christian pacifists who lived communally and clashed with the government. And they tried to knock the Dukabarism out of me. Their parents